assalamu alaikum welcome to day 7 of performance management 15 days revision crash course the topic is pricing so here we are going to cover the factors to consider when you are pricing your product which is known as three c's because the initials of the three are starting with c then calculation aspect pricing approaches and marketing based approaches starting with the three c's the three c's are cost competitor customer so when one wants to price their product they have to look at the cost their competitor and their customer under cost you should make sure that you need to cover the cost as well as to make a profit okay next you may need to consider the whole product okay because some products one might decide to sell them as a loss leader loss leader means when you are selling it at a loss now you might ask why because when there are so many products okay it's okay to sell some product as loss leader when you're selling at loss means price is less you're not able to cover the you're not able to make a profit through it now you're able to cover the entire cost but still you sell some product as a loss leader it's a marketing technique to drive your customer okay you want to attract customers because customers are always attracted to low prices so that's why some products you can keep as loss leader because you know when you attract them okay to that loss leader they're not only going to buy the loss leader but they're also going to buy some other product through which you can earn your margin next in the short term okay the you may be happy to cover just the variable cost to make some contribution even though it's not covering the fixed cost but in the long run remember you have to cover the fixed cost as well okay that's why you have to increase your volume and you need to consider the whole life cycle when you're costing okay when you're pricing and looking at the cost you have to see the cost of that product through the entire life cycle of that product because sometimes some products are initially they're very costly one example is it okay anything to do with it industry if you see any smartphones or any any software or anything initially they're very high priced but as it goes around the life cycle okay it goes through growth and it reaches the maturity stage the price starts declining because by that time they have already captured the market even if they reduce the price they'll be able to make profit but initial is not possible cost is very high they're not able to cover the revenue competitive yes your prices needs to be competitive the prices should not be that uh, let's say for a product okay you are charging hundred dollar your competitor you are charging two hundred dollar your competitor is charging hundred dollar so your competitor will take away the market from you no it should be the other way around you are pricing very low and the other one is pricing too high because it, then you will not be able to cover your profit. you will not be able to make profit even though in the short term you may be able to attract customer remember you are there to make a profit you cannot survive in the long run with that low price okay so later on when you try to increase the price you will lose away the customer that's why in order to price you have to see your competitor it has to be reasonable and within that range next to decide that you have to see how close a substitute our competitors product if the product that your customer competitors are selling they are not substitute to you you are safe you are safe because even if you price high you are not going to lose away customer but if they are very good substitute of your product remember the moment you charge high price customers are very smart they are going to go to your competitor substitute means they are feature wise taste wise look wise they are very similar it's just maybe the differences are very few okay next customer you also have to see how your customers are willing to pay for this you have to do market research okay market research could be in any way you can do survey questionnaire focus group okay then you have to consider the power of your customer do they have the power to walk away from you because if they have the power it will put a pressure on you to reduce your prices now coming to the calculation aspect okay you have to know one thing that is 
elasticity how elastic the demand is to the price that is known as price elasticity of demand ped either it could be elastic either it could be inelastic okay the formula is this you have to remember the formula percentage change in demand divided by percentage change in price that means how much your demand is changing to a change in price see demand is something which you cannot control okay it's uncontrollable factor external factor outside your control but price is something that is in your hand that you can change so that's why we have to see how much if we change the price if we increase the price was happening to demand if we decrease the price was happening to demand elasticity that is known as how flexible or inflexible demand is to the price okay now you have to know two things here elastic inelastic how do you decide when after doing a calculation percentage change in demand divided by percentage change in price if the answer is more than one it is known as elastic so the right approach here is to increase revenue you have to cut the price why if it's elastic if it's elastic that means even if you change a price by a small amount let's say your price is 10 you increase your price to 12 dollar that small increase in price is going to reduce your demand hugely that is known as elastic small change in price up or down anyway okay it could go anyway okay not only up only you can re reduce also so up and down your demand will suffer greatly in elastic on the other hand means even if you change your price by a small amount or even a bigger amount demand is not going to change so much that is known as inelastic inelastic means after you calculate your ped the amount that you get if it's less than one it is known as inelastic everything depends on that amount whether it's more than one or less than one less than one inelastic more than one elastic inelastic you can take a risk with the price demand will not change so much you see that is known as inelastic they are not very flexible to the price yes demand could change because there could be some other factor also we know okay there are so many other factors than price but this measures only the price keeping other constant a uh, variable constant so we are not touching the other variables okay maybe changes in fashion or changes in cost like anything could change right in the environment but we are not considering those other factor into this account right now only taking care of price only how price will read we react with demand so for elastic remember to increase revenue you have to cut the price and for inelastic you can still increase the revenue by keeping your price high one very good example of inelastic products are alcohol cigarettes right no matter how much the price is increased the taxes are pulled still consumers will keep on buying them their demand will not reduce because this kind of products are very addictive you know i'm not promoting them it's not good to not smoke but my point is it does not react with the price even if you increase the price revenue will still increase your demand will still increase okay for elastic products are like normal goods that you can buy every day like your shoes or let's say the clothes that you are buying even if, if, if even if you increase the price by little demand is hugely going to fall down demand falls down means revenue falls down so that's why for normal type of products you have to keep your products you have to cut the price you have to keep the prices low to increase the revenue and for inelastic that means on which you are very dependent without which you cannot survive some essential products are also known as inelastic okay like medicine is also another very good example of inelastic because no matter what happens to the price you still need to consume that medicine if you are sick right so if you increase the price also revenue will increase okay now pricing approaches one is demand based based on the demand you price okay here we have different approaches one is algebraic approach as the word says algebraic means some equation is there i'm i hope that all of you remember algebra right from your school days in maths yes where we put x and y and all those letter in terms of the number right x plus y as x y x plus x is 2x like that so we are not going to solve uh, 
algebraic equations here, don't worry. But yes, here we are going to substitute MR and MC. So profit will be maximized when your MR is equals to MC. What is this MR and MC? MR stands for marginal revenue, MC stands for marginal cost. Okay, this is another equation. See this, it could be any equation, okay? It's not fixed that it's A minus 2B Q only. No, it's just the form. I wanted to show you the form, how it will look like. In your exam, they can give MR equals to anything. But some letters and numbers will be there because algebra equation, right? And P is equals to A minus BQ. Okay, so now here, yeah, what is A and what is B? A is the price at which demand falls to zero. You have to know this, what it stands for. And B is the gradient. Sometimes we say there's um, 5 plus 2x. So 5 is the price at which demand falls to zero. And 2x, anything next to that letter, if there is any number. 2x, right? x is a letter, 2 is a number. So that 2 is known as the gradient. Like here, next to Q, there's a B. Then in MR, we have 2BQ. So that B is the gradient. That is the change in price divided by change in demand. Now, tabular approach. The next one could be this approach also. You might, be, you might give a table. You, need, you might have to fill the blanks. In the first row, we have price per unit. Okay, 22, 20, 19 dollar and all. Then we have variable cost per unit. Then we have contribution per unit. Okay. This they have already given. Number of units sold. Now to find total contribution. What do you have to do? I will just start with the first column. The rest all you will be able to do it. Okay. So total contribution is number of units sold into contribution per unit. In the first column it will be 16 into 50,000. Giving you 800,000 of total contribution so same way in the other columns also contribution per unit multiply by number of units sold to find the total contribution okay so you see now total fixed cost okay then from contribution less fixed cost fixed cost if you see remains same until a certain period of time later it increases again okay that is known as step cost okay because after a step, it increases. It's like a staircase. Okay. So 200, then again there's increase. Then from 280 again, it increased to 360. Sometimes it might remain constant also. Like for a long period of time. Then once you deduct fix from contribution, you get net profit. So 800 minus 200 is 600. Then 640, 630, 680, 630, 450. Now, one of the pricing approach is cost plus. Cost plus means you add up all the cost with that plus. It could be any markup or margin you can add because you want to make a profit. So here how it works, okay? You have to establish cost per unit, okay? You might either have marginal cost. Marginal cost means only variable cost or full cost. Full cost means you are taking fixed cost also. Fixed plus variable gives you total cost or full cost. Or just the prime cost. What is prime cost? It comes from the manufacturing and all, no? In the factory and all, when you're working. All, the, all your direct costs, you add with the cost of raw materials. Okay? Without taking the indirect cost, without taking the overheads. That is known as prime cost. Then, once you establish the cost per unit, next stage is calculate a price using a target markup or margin. Any target. You might say 20%, 10%, 5%, anything. After that, it is whatever the price you get, that is the starting point. Okay. Even if you're using any other method of pricing, still this approach is used as a starting point already. After having all the cost, you add some uh, percentage to it. Okay. Next. Advantages of cost plus is number one, it is widely used and accepted by everyone. Second, it is simple because costs are something that is known, you can calculate. Third, because you know cost and then you have to add certain markup, 
So this is an easy approach. You can delegate this task to your junior management also, which saves your time. Then you can justify if the price increases. You can say because cost increases, price increases. And this encourages price stability. Okay. If all competitors have similar cost structure and use a similar markup, price are more stable. No, it's easier to compare also. Then disadvantages is it ignores the relationship between price and demand. You might say, okay, based on the cost, you are increasing price, but what about the demand? What about the elasticity and elasticity? It ignores all that. Second, no attempt to establish optimum price. Optimum is always the best, right? But we don't attempt to, we only go by the cost and add any kind of just margin to it. It might not be the optimum price. Third, different absorption methods give rise to different cost and hence different selling prices. Okay. Then it does not guarantee profit. If sales volumes are low, fixed costs may not be recovered. So you might say based on the cost and some markup, but that might not be able to cover your fixed cost if the volumes are less. So no profit. You must decide whether to use full cost, manufacturing cost, or marginal cost. This structured method fails to recognize the manager's need for flexibility in pricing. See, because you're using a structure in cost, right? And let's say you have a policy of adding 5% or 15% or 20% markup or margin. But it is so rigid. Okay, you, we all know situation changes anytime. Sometimes you might have to increase or decrease. So this method reduces that manager's uh, flexibility in pricing. Just stick with that uh, rule, which might not be suitable for the situation. Circular reasoning. Circular reasoning means this goes in circle. How? See, price changes affects the volume, which then affects your fixed costs, which then again affects the price. Understood? It starts with price, it ends with price. So it goes in circle and circle. Price affecting volume, then volume affecting fixed costs, then again fixed costs affecting price. Now, next approach from cost plus is market skimming. Market skimming and we'll see under what condition this approach is suitable. Okay. Market skimming is the second method. Market skimming means initially when you introduce in the market, that product is, uh, price is very high. You set the price very high. Why? You want to get the maximum number of customers during that uh, introduction phase as possible. And customers should be willing to pay extra also for those products. Remember, this strategy is very risky if you come up with just a normal product or a product where substitutes are there. Okay, so to have price skimming as a pricing strategy, you should come up with a product which is very unique. Okay, which was never there in the market. The features are way better, but the prices will fall over time. One very good example of this is Apple MacBook. When they initially introduce any new models, we all know prices are very high. But customers are still, there will be some customers available still willing to pay during that phase also. The fast mover customer. Okay. Mostly IT firm, technology related firm are in this sector, this group. They charge high because they've invested heavily also, right? So it makes sense, justify. Now, as I told you, competition has to be very less for you to adopt this strategy. Otherwise you are going to fail very badly. Okay, where the product is new, where it is differentiated. Okay. Now, next, a firm with a liquidity problem may use market skimming. If you're having liquidity, you want to initially charge very high price so that you'll be able to generate cash flows high early on. Where high prices in the early stages of a product's life cycle might generate high initial cash flow. Okay. Now, this type of products usually have short life cycle. You come to the market, charge a very high price, get the maximum number of customer or the profit, make a profit and then come up with a new product that product goes off 
short life cycle but still is very profitable next is penetration the third approach this is the opposite of skimming you charge low price initially to gain market share but this type of pricing is good for those company where volumes are very high okay because then you can sustain if volume is less penetration will not work this is suitable when objective is to increase market share you want to discourage any new entrant from entering the market by having low price and if firm wishes to shorten the initial period of the product life cycle if there are significant economies of scale to be achieved from high volume output and demand is highly elastic and so would respond well to low prices what did we studied in price elasticity if it's elastic keeping the price low is going to achieve great revenue now next you should be linking the pricing decisions for different products okay let's say product a so if you are having many different products we we discussed all the previous for one particular product for example you are in one particular industry you are using one type of strategy for all the products in the under in that company for example all these luxury cars bmw mercedes lexus ford porsche you name it right i'm sure you know all the sports car when they come to the market they are very high priced so they are targeting only high income people right they are not targeting the entire mass through which they earn a very good cash flow early in the product life cycle so they use price skimming but then they use this method for all of their products all of their cars all of their bmw cars are priced high but sometimes some company might have different type of products okay so especially where uh, they are segmenting their product they want to segment for high income low income middle income then different pricing strategy for different products needs to be adopted for example a company is having two product product a product b so product a you can price cheaply so that you can attract the customer once you attract them they can also buy product b through which you can earn a higher margin and this okay the key issue is the extent to which customer must buy the other product this also you can't say it's a, it will work or not because sometimes customers just come buy product a and goes off they might not buy the other product so it's a little risky but it works it works for complementary product yes complementary means where you to for product a you need product b also that means they are dependent on each other without having product b product a will not work one very good example is car and fuel to ride the car you need fuel right another example is you might say a cricket cricket and ball i mean the bat you need for cricket you need the bat right bat and a ball they complement you need them together complex and milk if you take in food industry so there are so many other things next product line pricing now volume discount we all know when we go for bulk purchases where we buy huge quantity we get discount that also that individual person is having that large order for that individual there is a discount it's not that separate companies uh, customers are buying and then to, when you accumulate them together it becomes a huge volume no 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 one single customer is only ordering a huge quantity so for that individual customer there is a discount this they do to uh, make customers repeat business with them and all right to keep them satisfied okay as i told you cumulative quantity discounts this is to increase customer loyalty to attract new customer because when they know when they order huge order they are going to get discount so for that discount they will order great quantity right and to reduce sales processing cost to lower customers purchasing cost yes clearance of surplus stock sometimes to clear off your stock also you give discount so that at least in discount you sell up the stock increase use of peak capacity 
during your off peak capacity when it's not at peak you can give them heavy discounts okay now price discrimination is the next approach as the word says discrimination you are discriminating on price that means for the same product you are having different prices in different markets okay for example let's i'm having a phone okay my phone in oman versus my phone in dubai they're in different prices but the same product so that is price discrimination but this is suitable only when you as a seller have a monopoly power if you have a lot of com uh, competitors locally as well as internationally you will not be able to adopt this strategy price discrimination for this you have to have a monopoly power that means only you are the one who is selling that product no one else then yes you can charge high in one country low in another country up to you customers may be segregated into different markets yes they are segregated into different markets barriers exist or can be created to prevent transfer between markets and different elasticity in each market in each market elasticity might not be same what might be inelastic in some might be elastic in the other region okay so in an elast inelastic region you might set higher prices in elastic segment lower prices one very good example of price discrimination is in airplanes for business class and economy class it's the same flight everyone is traveling to the same destination still prices are different okay there's a difference in the price why is that but for that difference in price they are giving additional features also they are giving additional uh, comfort and whatever luxuries are given to the business class people over the economic class and also limited seats are there so to purchase that luxury that comfort you have to pay pay a huge price even the same flight same destination okay now relevant cost pricing next one relevant cost only you are taking if you know the concept of relevant cost you know what i'm talking about relevant cost means you are not taking any past cost you are only taking cost that is going to affect the future known as a net incremental cash flow because of that project you are taking whatever the cash flow incremental incremental is change in the cash flow because of that project you are going to price based on that this is suitable for one of projects okay if it's not one of project this will not work because this net incremental cash flow only happens when it's a one of project only one time only you are going to go through that project for example to have that project you need to hire some additional staff you might need to hire uh, purchase some additional machinery those are relevant cost you have to add it okay now from your exam the questions from objective case questions is alg company then from section c hs equation mkl sniff company thank you for watching and i shall see you in day 8 we have all almost covered half of the revision crash course and you can watch all my we uh, crash course under the playlist pm revision crash course from day 1 to day 15 and you can also download this uh, presentation slides from my channel only all you need to do is go to my about section of the channel and go down and click on pm revision crash course you'll be able to download all the slides thank you for watching and take care